let's go ahead and complete. <clears throat> now we're gonna talk about kick warning signs or kick indicators. So for kick warning signs, guys, we have some signs in the railing operation and some signs in trapping or while making a connection. So for drilling or trapping operation, if you look here, we have some signs in flat line and some in red line. So for all of these signs in flat, we may have a kick, may have a kick. But these ones in red lines is called positive indicator. So for sure we have a kick, okay, for sure. For sure we have a kick. So let's start with the flag signs. Number one, while drilling operation, if you found sudden jump in drilling grade, for example, we start with rate of penetration, let's say uh, 45 feet per hour, then there is sudden jump, it will be 46, 47, then being 50, then 55, and so on. Okay, so if there is a sudden jump in the rate of penetration, so we may have a penetrating abnormally pressure formation, so we may have a kick, so we need to make flow a check. Okay, so all of these black signs, if we found any of them, we need to make flow a check. Flow check, I mean to, <clears throat> I mean to uh, make it's our uh, stop pumping, stop TTS, and the check for flow. If there is a flow, you need to shut the door immediately without any delay. If no flow, you need to resume your operation. So for the drilling rate increase, you're gonna find it is a real time. So once there is a sudden jump for our OP, you're gonna find on your drilling console. Second one, gas cut drilling fluid is a lagging indicator. If there is Sudden jump for the percent of the gas, for example, we have normal percent of the drill formation, let's say uh, 8%, then you found 9% or 10% due to small percent of the gas, okay, uh, just uh, enter to the well. So a mud logger can relate to this point, we need to also make flow a check, okay. A flow check, if no flow, we can resume operation, okay, but it's okay to make automatic. Okay, it's okay to make bottom up. If uh, there is a flow, you need to shorten the well immediately without any delay. Increase in chloride. Once you penetrating uh, abnormally pressure formation and there is salt water or something like this, so this may increase the chloride uh, in the return, so it will be lagging indicator. So this may be D2, we have a kick, or maybe uh something else okay so we need only to make flow check to check if there is flow or not increasing the torque and drag so it's the real time decrease in cutting density or decrease in shale density as you know with depth increase as depth increase so rock density supposed to increase due to uh compaction but if you found uh, shale density decrease or rock density decrease this may uh, due to uh, this rock is abnormally pressured, okay? There is a large pool space filled with flow, okay? So this may be a uh, kick warning sign, so you need to make flow a check. If you found a change in size or shape of a cutting, okay, splinter, the blocky, uh, or something like this, so you need to make also flow a check. If we have increased in the flow line temperature, so we need to make flow a check as if we have a kick so we're gonna find uh, the temperature uh, trend line or the temperature gradient starts to increase okay so all of these indicators all of these signs we need to make flow check stop pumping and check for flow but here for uh, increase in flow rate if we are for example having 51 percent then uh, we have sudden jump for the flow rate to be 55, 56, then a stop pumping and the resistive flow. So we need to shorten the wheel immediately without any delay. There is a gap, okay? If we have pit gain, if your pit level has increased, for example, two parallel, three parallel, five parallel, so we have a gap, we need to shorten the wheel immediately without any delay. If the well, while making the flow check, 
pump is off and there is a flow, so there is a gate you need to shut in the well immediately without any delay. Coming to the driving connections, if we have increase in the flow light, so it is a positive indicator, so you need to shut in the well, okay? But if you found and the model logger can relate to these uh, different types of the gas, trap gas or connection gas or background gas, so uh, we need to make flow check. Trap gas is a swap gas, okay, while pulling out from the well uh, with bottom up, okay, with bottom up, uh, there is percent of the gas, it's called trap gas or swap gas, okay. Connection gas, while stopping the bomb for making connection, we're losing the effect of APL, so when we have some gas enter to the well, it's called connection gas, and with bottom up, it is a lagging indicator, so the mud logger can relate to this point. For background gas, it's also a lagging indicator, and the background gas is the normal percent, <coughs> the normal percent of the gas and the drill deformation or the cutting. Tight well and the connection. So once we're losing the APL effect, once you're losing the APL effect, the formation tends to cave in. So you uh, think it is abnormal formation pressure or uh, your torque and drag started to increase. Okay. Also, if there is incorrect volume while comparing for uh, volumes, actual volume from trip tank and calculated volume. So uh, you see uh, incorrect volume. So this may be uh, indicator of a case. So we need to make a flow a check. So let's see some figures here, uh, different shapes and different sizes for the cutting. So this may be uh, an indicator for the gag, so we need to make flow check. Here is the flow sensor. Okay, if you look here, this is the pedal type connected to the gauge. So here, for example, our gauge is 50%. Okay, this is the normal flow percent. Once we have influx, so uh, there is increase in the flow rate. So it will be, for example, 55 or 60 or something like this. If you look here, this is normal. But once we have influx, so our, our gauge or our uh, return flow started to increase. So here we have a kick. For sure, we have a kick. So we need to shorten our well immediately without any delay. Okay. Also, here for a PVT pit volume stabilizer or pit sensors, if we have a pit gain, okay, for example, here uh, three parallel, six parallel, as you see here. So uh, we have a kick, we need to shut in the well immediately. As you see here for the pit uh, deviation gauge, we adjust it for loss and gain. So we're gonna adjust the high value for it to be five parallel and the uh, low value to be minus five. So if there is a sudden jump, one, two, or three, or five, so we have a kick. If more than one, five, for example, here, six parallel, so the alarm will be turned on. Okay, now to talk about SCR or slow circulating rate or reduced rate circulating pressure. The purpose of having SCR value is to be used while having a kick, okay, to make our calculation properly. So here, SCR is the reduced circulating pump rate used when circulating out a kick. Why, how, and when to record SCR? Why? Number one, to minimize. Number one, to minimize the excess of the annulus pressure. If you use high pump rate while circulating out the gap, okay, so you're gonna apply here high APL, okay, so this may affect the bottom hole pressure, so you may cause induced fracturing to your formation. So we need to use a slow rate, slow circulating rate. Also, if uh, or while circulating out a kick, you need to adjust the choke position, open and close, okay? So SCCR, slow circulating rate, allows you to uh, give much time for a choke operator to control the situation, to can open or close. Also, allows you some time for weightening up the mud weight, okay? You want to uh, use weight and weight method, so you need to prepare your kill mud weight while killing the well. So you need to have some time, uh, and this uh, SCR or slow circulating grade uh, support you uh, for this issue. Okay. 
also uh, making the gazing of the mud and disposal of the influx from the mud gas separator. As you know, the mud gas separator has a capacity, okay, has a capacity, okay. So here, once once the influx enters the mud gas separator, there is a buffer and the gas started to be out from the well. So if there is higher rate, okay, the mud gas separator can handle all of this amount of the gas. So there will be overloading of the gas into the mud gas separator. So the gas may be forced to go to the shaker area and to cause some firing or some explosion, okay? Also reduce the risk of a choke erosion. If we use high rate, so we're gonna hit all the time in the choke. So we may cause erosion for the choke. And last one is to reduce the risk of overpressuring system at plugging. Okay. If we have, for example, a choke plugging or nozzle plug, okay, and we use high circulating rate, so this may lead to uh, overpressuring in the system. Okay. So SCR making uh, a solution for this problem. Okay. How to take this? Is not also? Yeah. Is not also to reduce uh, the expansion in the buffer buffer uh, line. Again, the buffer line. We use the gas expansion in the buffer line. Yeah. Okay. So here, how to take SCR to record your SCR? You need to be off bottom. Okay, two or three feet. Okay, then start to take rate from uh, 20 SPM to 50 SPM. We start bump number one. Okay, start recording for 30 SPM and 40 SPM, for example. So at 30 SPM, record your pressure. Once the pressure is position, you need to record from remote choke panel. Why from remote choke panel? Because this place you're gonna use while killing the wall. Then raise the pump rate to be 40 SPM and wait for pressure stabilization, record the pressure at 40 SPM. Now shut down pump number one and go ahead with pump number two. Same thing at 30 SPM, wait for pressure stabilization, record the pressure from a remote shock panel, then raise the pressure for 40 SPM and record it from the remote shock panel. Now we have two pumps, pump number one, pump number two, we have uh, two rates, 30 SPM, 40 SPM. So we have two circulating rates for minimum two mud pumps. We, why we have two mud pumps? Because one is back up for the second, okay? Okay, when to record SCR pressure? At the beginning of every shift or tour, at least once a tour, okay? At any time, mud properties are changed, weight and viscosity. Anytime there is a change in the friction system. Okay, as you know, SCR is a pump pressure, and pump pressure is the pressure required to overcome all friction losses or pressure losses in the system. So once we have uh, mud properties change it, weight nozzle change it, PHA change it, any repair to mud pumps. Okay, so we have a change for the friction system. So we have pressure loss change. So we need to record a new CCR pressure or record a new pump pressure, at least every 500 feet. So for example, here, if you record at the beginning of the open hole here, or the shift here, now CCR at depth, let's say 4,000, okay? So you need before reaching 4,500, or this is your maximum to record a new SCR. What will happen if you exceed 500? Let's say, for example, here, we are in uh, 4,800 uh, feet, okay? And we have a kick. So if we have a kick at 4,800, okay, we're gonna use the old SCR, okay, for our calculation, okay? So let's say we calculated ICB to be, uh, let's say, 900. Okay, but once you running your pump and reaching the kill rate, let's say 30 SPM, you're gonna find on your kill pipe gauge here, we have, for example, 1050. Why we have different values be between the calculated ICB and the actual ICB? Because you uh, didn't take a new CCR after reaching uh, maximum 500 feet. At least, 
at least 500 feet, you need to record a new uh, SCR pressure, okay? After kill the well, after kill the well, you have a new mud weight, uh, kill mud weight, okay? So now the pressure loss in the system will be changed, mud proportions are changed, so weight is changed, so we need to record a new pump pressure. Okay, now to talk about formation strength tests, we have leak of test and we have something called formation integrity test or FIT test, okay? Leak of test is designed for exploratory well to get the information about the fracture pressure. But FIT or formation integrity test is used for uh, the development wells who uh, can conduct that to a pre uh, value, predetermined value before fracture pressure to just ensure or uh, inform, confirm that uh, your formation can withstand this pressure. So for leak of test, guys, okay, leak of test determines the pressure at which formation begins to take fluid so we can determine the fracture pressure. So here, this is the casing show, and here is the open hole, casing show, open hole. So once we drill from the new hole, close the casing show from five to 15 feet, okay, we need to uh, make circulation for the mud to ensure the mud, the bump, the mud in, like the mud out, okay? So the mud in the hole must be clean and uniform, both in and out, okay? Then we're gonna uh, close our well and start pumping from the drill pipe, okay? And start recording the pressure as a surface pressure. This test should be uh, conducted using cement pump. Why cement pump? Because the cement pump is more accurate and can allow you to pump small volumes, okay? So here we're gonna start pumping small volumes like 0.25 parallel, 0.25 25 parallel and record the pressure. We start plotting volumes versus pressure. So once pumping volume, record the pressure, record the pressure, record the pressure. Okay. So now we have a trend like this. Once the trend started to be changed, so at this point, this is the pressure of leak of test. Here, the formation started to take flow. The formation started to leak. Okay. Look here to this figure. Now we have pressure, volume. We need to start the plotting. Volume versus pressure, volume versus pressure, like this. Once there is a deviation from the trend, like you see here at this point, so the formation started to take a flow. The formation started to leak, okay, like this. So now we're having our leak of test pressure is about 720 PSI. If you look here. We have surface pressure, 720 PSI, and here is hydrostatic pressure is uh, this number, 1,498. So the equivalent of this pressure is about 2,280, okay? So this is the fracture pressure. So fracture pressure equal what? Equal leak of test pressure plus hydrostatic pressure. So this comes to a new concept called maximum allowable drilling fluid density. Okay, as mentioned, we have here 720. So here we having uh, fracture pressure. Fracture pressure equal what guys? Equal the maximum pressure at the surface plus the hydrostatic pressure. So if you need to calculate something called the maximum allowable drilling fluid density, it is the maximum mod weight you can use during the drilling operation. Okay, you have two ways to calculate. First thing is to calculate Sorry. it. Yeah. One thing, but if we use this mod, if you use this value as mod, while well, circulation will be more higher. So well, we should be ECD. Will be oh. high. Yeah, we hear we hear asking for an aesthetic situation, not at high, not at dynamic. Ah, okay. 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 So here for this one, maximum allowable drilling flow density, you can take the leak of test pressure, 720 PSI over the TVD, 3000 over the constant, okay? Plus the mud weight as a test. And this point is very important, mud weight at test. If mud weight is changed, so we have new concept called the mass, maximum allowable annual surface pressure. But at leak of test pressure, we have only mod weight, one mod weight 
it is called mod weight as the test. Okay, so here maximum allowable mod weight equal uh, leak of test pressure over the TVD constant plus the original mod weight as the test. So the answer here is like what you see. We gonna have another method to calculate the maximum allowable drilling flow density is the summation of the leak of test pressure plus the hydrostatic pressure. So the resultant here is the fracture pressure taking this value 2,218 over the TVD is the constant. So we having here the maximum allowable drilling flow density. But now let's mention about something. We have rounding the rules for the mud weight. So mud weight in our course need to be one integral number and one decimal number, okay? One integral and one decimal. So for example, our mod weight should be 15.1, 16.3, for example, 10.4, okay? But not 41 or 42 or 43 or something like this, okay? So here we have rounding the rule, rounding up and rounding down. So if the final answer for uh, any, any number, let's say 13.75, okay? Now we have two options, to round up or round down. So to round up this value 13.75, we wanna increase this one. And instead of seven, it will be eight. So it will be 13.8. If we need to round down, so we ignore this one. So it will be 13.7, okay? Another example, for example, if we have 12.013, so if we make round up, it will be 12.1, okay? Just make round up for this one. If you need to make round down, just ignore this one. So it will be 12 only, okay? Another example, if we have 11.76, okay? So to round up, it will be 11.8. If you round down, it will be 11.7. Clear, guys? Guys, can you hear this point? Yes, we're here. Okay, okay. So now let's talk about our uh, concept, maximum allowable drilling flow density. This is the maximum. If we're gonna use higher than the maximum, we're gonna fracture the formation, okay? So is maximum allowable drilling flow density. So from your opinion, this value should be rounded up or rounded down? Down, round down. Yes, round down. So here for this final answer, okay, if you calculate it, it will be 14.2 uh, something. So it will be 2.4, for example, okay? Once you round down, so you make ignore for this value, so it will be 14.2, okay? So any maximum allowable drilling flow density, if the answer is 15.03, it will be 15. If the answer is uh, 14.7, for example, 7, uh, 5, so it will be 14.7, okay? Okay, now to talk about another concept called maximum allowable annular surface pressure or the mass, but let's first differentiate between two things. Here we have two wells, okay? Here at the test, we have mod weight. Okay, let's just say our mod weight here is 10 ppg. 10 ppg. Okay, at the test. Okay, so now we have surface pressure. This surface pressure, let's just say, is about 700 BSI. 700 BSI. Okay, and after some time, we proceed in drilling operation. Okay, and we have here our surface pressure. Okay, is uh, maximum surface pressure is let's say uh, 600 psi. So now have two options. Now let's say mod weight is 11 ppg. This is case number one, and this one is case number two. For case number one, guys, leak of test pressure. Okay, and mass. Both are equal or there's a value higher than the other for case number one, leak of test pressure and the mass.
Anyone could share as at the time of the test? Comparing between the two two uh, two wells or what? What do you mean by uh, we are we are in case number one? Okay, I'm asking for leak of test pressure and mass for case number one. Both of them are equal, so we have leak of test equal mass equal 700, or there is difference between mass and leak of test pressure. No, the leak of test is by PPG and the mass at pressure at surface. Yeah. Okay, so there is a difference between leak of test and mass. Yeah. No. For for the first case during the test, okay, we have our mod weight is 10 ppg. So if you look to the definition of the mass, mass is defined as surface pressure, okay, and leak of test pressure is the surface pressure, okay. So it is the surface wow. pressure that, when added to the hydrostatic pressure exerted by the mud column, could result in formation breakdown at the weakest point in the well if exceeded. So at the Test time, okay, we have leak of test pressure 700 and the mass is the same value of 700. If you increase one PSI over the leak of test, you're going to break the formation. If you're going to increase one PSI over the mass, you're going to break the formation. So for case number one, we have mass as a surface pressure equal leak of test pressure as a surface pressure <laughs> equal 700 PSI, okay? At the, at the test, we have 10 ppg as a mud weight. But after the test, we're going to uh, resume our drilling operation. So making a change for the mud weight to be 11 ppg. Now we make a change for the mud weight. So for case number two, you think leak of test pressure is a change or same, then leak of test pressure and mass both are the same, or there is a difference for case number two. Volume are changed, but leak of test and mass are same. Yes, yes, you're right. So here, leak of test pressure, same, because we conducted that with mud weight at the test 10 ppg. So here, leak of test pressure is 700. Okay, no change of red. But for the mass, guys, now must change it. Why must it change it? Because hydrostatic pressure changes, because we have new mud weight. So once we have new mud weight, we have new surface pressure. If you look here, we're increasing the mud weight. So the hydrostatic pressure increased, so the mass decreased, OK? If you look here, the mass equal what? Equal fracture pressure minus hydrostatic pressure at the shore. So if we make decomposition for the fracture pressure and for the hydrostatic, the answer will be maximum allowable mud weight minus drilling mud weight times 0.052 times TVD at the shore, OK? So once, once the hydrostatic pressure increased, we have fracture pressure as constant value. Okay, so mass will decrease and vice versa. If hydrostatic pressure is decreased, I mean we decrease the mud weight, so mass will increase to compensate for this reduction. Okay, so here, if mud weight is changed, the mass should be recalculated. But leak of test pressure is a constant value over the time. Okay. Tell P uh, make another leak of test or another formation. Okay, guys, clear? No, for leak of test, uh, but uh, leak of test also will change if we change the mark, no? Yeah, but because leak of test, we did it with 10 ppg. So if it's 11 ppg, leak of test sure will decrease. Yes, yes, yes. If, if, you, get, if, yes. if you told us leak of test by PPG directly, okay, will not change. Yes. But by PSI, will change. Yes, you are right. But but I mentioned while making the test, we have only mud weight. Okay. We we didn't make the test with many mud weights. So for example, we may select 10 ppg, we may select nine, we may select eleven. So now we have one mud weight. Okay. So we have one leak of test pressure. But of course, as you mentioned, if the mud weight at the test is changed, so we have a new value for leak of test. So leak of test pressure is dependent on the mud weight as it is. Okay. 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 Let's go ahead. Here is just a graphical representation. Once hydrostatic is down, so mass is up. Once hydrostatic is up, so mass is down. Another figure. 
mass is down, so hydrostatic is up, and mass is up, so hydrostatic is down. Okay, so here, what can increase the risk of exceeding the mass during the operation? We have some reasons. Incorrect casing show sitting depth. As you know, uh, mass calculation is depending on the TVD. So if there is incorrect casing show sitting depth, so for sure you're gonna have uh, incorrect value of the mass. Unexpected high pressure, okay? So this may lead to exceed the mass. If you have larger kick size, so same thing. Uh, if you have low fracture pressure, if you uh, drill long open hole section, if you have gas migration, if you have gas migration, so this will lead to the oil pressure in the system to be increased. If you have bad practicing, for example, while circulating out a kick or something like this, so you close the chop uh, completely or something like this, so you add more pressure to the whole system, so you're gonna crack the formation and exceed the mass. If you have too safety, uh, too much safety margin as overbalance, okay, this is the risk also of exceeding mass. If you're ignoring the chop line fraction. Now, if we have a kick, we have a kick and we need to shut in the well. We have two options to shut in the well soft or to shut in the well hard. So let's look here to the lineup for hard shut in. There is a difference, only one difference for the lineup for hard or soft is here in the remote chop position. For hard shut in, you're going to find the remote chop position is closed from the beginning completely closed, but for soft shut in, you're going to find it's open, not completely closed, okay? So here, the lineup, we have the way from mud pump to the drill string is okay. Then we have our manual choke valve is open, HCR is closed. Then the way to the remote choke is open, but the remote choke itself is closed, okay? Then you can record the pressure from gauge from here. This for hard shut in. But if you look here for soft shut in, you're gonna find your remote shock is open. Okay, so this is the difference between soft shut in and hard shut in. The way from the mud pumps down the rail string upward, okay, is open. Okay, so let's talk about the operation or sequence of the operation. Number one, you need to pick up bottom position your string or space out. Okay, then stop pump, stop rotation. Then here is the difference in the operation between uh, hard shot in and soft shot in. For the hard shot in, you need to close your POP first, whether you close the RAM or annular, then open HCR. So here you need to close POP first, then open HCR, then observe the pressure. And soft shot in, you need to open HCR first, then close POP, then record pressure. Okay, so now guys, I have a question for you. What will happen if we make uh, step number two at the beginning? So I mean, we stop pumping and rotation first, then pick off bottom and position strength. Is it okay? I think we'll increase the, uh, the volume of antlax. Yes, this is the point. So we are not able to make stop pumping first, okay? Because if we stop pumping first, we're gonna lose the pump pressure. Okay, so we're gonna have further influx inside the well. Okay, good. Now for soft shut in procedure, we're gonna make the same thing: pick of bottom and position strength, making space out, stop pumping and rotation. Then here open HCR valve because your formation may be weak. Okay, uh, will not uh, have. Uh, with the strength enough, okay? So we need to open HCR first to give away for the fluid, okay? Then close our POP, then close the remote shock and start to observe your pressure. Okay, once we shut in the well by soft or hard shutting method, we need to make verification there is no leak across the POP. So we need to line up to the threat tank and set alarm. So here, once the well is uh, closed, we need to line up for the trip tank. If there is a gain in the trip tank, so there is a leak in the POP. If no gain, okay, no gain, so the POP is secured. So the well is secured and everything is okay. Okay. But if there is a leak across, for example, the annular, so we need to go ahead uh, closing the uh, RAM, let's say 
upper ramp, then middle ramp, then bottom ramp, and so on. Okay. Now, once we shut in the well on a cap and open HCR to record the pressure, we're gonna find a sudden jump for the pressures till pressure stabilization. Once reaching pressure stabilization here as this area, this is our pressure, shot and drill pipe pressure and shot and casing pressure. You always found shot and casing pressure is higher than shot and drill pipe pressure because the influx is in the annulus area, okay? Okay, if you didn't take any action while this period, you're gonna find a uh, jump, jump for post pressure by the same rate, okay? This will be due to gas migration or influx migration. So you found shot and drill pipe pressure increased and casing pressure increased. Okay. Now here, after shutting the well, open HCR to record the pressure. We have the recorded data: shot and drill pipe pressure, shot and casing pressure, and bit gain. Okay. So shot and drill pipe pressure tells you how much is the difference between the hydrostatic pressure hydrostatic pressure in the well and deformation pressure. And shot and casing tells you how much is difference between the uh, formation pressure and the hydrostatic pressure in the annulus side. So always shot and casing pressure is larger than shot and drill pipe pressure by the loss and the hydrostatic pressure due to uh, existence of the influx in the annulus side. Bit gain here is the size of the influx at the shot end. Okay. Okay. So look to this slide, if we have here, shot in the well, we have here from drill pipe side, shot in drill pipe and hydrostatic is known. And from casing side, we having shot in casing, not hydrostatic and influx hydrostatic. So look to these two equations, equation number one and equation number two. Formation pressure here is equal to hydrostatic pressure plus shot in drill pipe, but here formation pressure equal hydrostatic of mud plus hydrostatic influx plus shot in casing pressure. So in your opinion, to get the formation pressure, which side is easier to get formation pressure? Anyone could share? Stream. Yeah, from the real stream. Okay, so here we're gonna start. Yeah, we're gonna start from the real pipe. We having shot in drill pipe and we having mud hydrostatic pressure. So now we having formation pressure. Okay. Then we're gonna substitute here in this equation. We have formation pressure and we have shot in casing, but still not having influx hydrostatic or mud hydrostatic. Okay. But we have it again. It again is let's just say three parallel. Okay. And we have annulus capacity annulus capacity, let's say equal 0, 1, 7 parallel per feet, for example. Okay, so now if we need to calculate the height of the influx, how to calculate, just take pit gain in parallel over annulus capacity and parallel per feet. So now parallel goes parallel. So we have now the hydrostatic or the height of the influx. Once you get the, uh, the height of the influx, so we can determine the hydrostatic pressure. So now we have our mud hydrostatic. So we can determine the influx hydrostatic and we can know the influx gradient, okay? From the influx gradient, you can determine, from the influx uh, gradient, you can determine the type of the influx you have. So, uh, let's tell you uh, the number of the gradients. For example, here, guys, uh, if the gradient is, yeah, if the gradient, for example, is about uh, 0.1 psi per feet, so it will be gas. If it's about 0.3, so it will be oil, if it's about 0.433, 0.433, so it will be fresh water. If it is 0 0.465, 465, so it will be salt water, okay? So once we get formation pressure, 
shot encasing pressure, then calculating the mud hydrostatic. So now we can able to calculate the influx hydrostatic and the influx gradient. If the influx gradient is 0.1 psi per feet, so it will be gas, 0.3 it will be oil, 0.433 it will be fresh water. If it is 0.465, so it will be salt water. Now here there is a comparison between shot in drill pipe pressure and shot in casing pressure. You always found shot in casing pressure to be larger than shot in drill pipe pressure. That's why, because the influx is in the annulus side. So always shot in casing is larger than shot in drill pipe by this amount loss in the hydrostatic pressure. Okay. Here, guys, if we have a float valve inside the drill pipe or drill string, okay, so we can't able to read the drill pipe pressure all the time. You count zero psi. So how to get the actual value of shot in drill pipe pressure? You need to start pump slowly here, pump slowly by five spm to open to open the float valve. So here we have the initial value of the casing, 600 PSI, okay? We start pump in the drill pipe, okay? So once the casing pressure started to increase, for example, to be 601, 602, okay? So this value is the value of shot in drill pipe pressure here at 500 PSI. But what will happen if we found sudden jump, for example, here by 100? So now we have casing 700 psi. 700 psi, this means we have 100 psi as over balance, as a trap the pressure. So now the real pipe pressure is about 600. So to get the original value of shutting the real pipe, you need to subtract the additional 100 psi from both gauges, from casing to be 600 and from the real pipe pressure would be 500, okay? Okay, for pressure stabilization, guys, okay, we have low permeability formation and high permeability formation. For high permeability formation, we're gonna find the influx just enter to the well quickly. So we have here pressure stabilization quickly, take no time. But for low permeability formation, the influx will take large time to stick, okay, to be stable. This for low permeability formation and high permeability formation. Okay, so guys, I need to discuss these cases with you. When shot in drill by pressure equals zero and shot in casing pressure have a value. And you want to share? What's the question? Yeah, shot in drill by pressure equals zero when and we have shot in casing pressure have a value. Let's say after shutting the well open HCR to get the pressure, we found shutting the by pressure equal zero, shutting casing the pressure equal 400. So what is the problem? Uh, this case maybe will be while tripping, no? While a? While tripping. While tripping? Why yeah, while tripping? Uh, I, 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 I mean now we are in drilling operation, okay, have a kick. So we shot in the well, open HCR and start recording the pressure. We found this pressure, okay? So we have a kick. We have a kick and while recording the pressure, we found shot in drill pipe zero and shot in casing equal 400. We just mentioned for this case. If there is float surplus. Yes, if there is a float, and the drill pipe, so shot in drill pipe pressure will equal zero and shot in casing pressure is still have a value. Also another case, if we have malfunction for the gauge of the drill pipe, malfunction, okay? Okay, so what about the second case? Shot in casing pressure equals zero, but shot in drill pipe pressure have a value, let's say 350. What do you think? Malfunction of uh, casing, the gauge. Yeah, malfunction with the gauge. Okay, it's okay. What else? If there is a pre-string plugged. There is a string plugged, no.
if we have uh, formation back off, okay, formation back off like this one here, for formation back off. So no communication between the formation pressure and loss in hydrostatic here with the casing gauge. So we have zero PSI on the casing gauge. Also, if there is any plugging or any blocking before the casing gauge. So for example, if we closing the uh, bottom ramp, okay? So also no communication between the gauge and the uh, uh, formation pressure and the hydrostatic and the casing, okay? Also, if we have a blockage in the chalk line, fully blockage, so no communication also, okay? So back off or uh, if uh, the HCR valve is uh, closed, okay? Any Anything, anything related to the uh, gauge, okay? So here, if we have formation back off, if we have closed the uh, bottom ram, or if there is any blockage in uh, the chop line, okay? So what about this one? Shutting drill pipe pressure equal shutting casing pressure. Well is balanced. Well is balanced. So we can, we enter to high zone pressure, high pressure zone. Or something. High pressure zone. So shut and drill pipe equal shut in case any pressure. No. If if we are of bottom of bottom like this, okay, of bottom like this. So now shot in the real pipe pressure gonna equal shot in casing pressure because the difference between the formation pressure and the hydrostatic in the drill pipe and the hydrostatic in the casing is the same. Okay. Okay. Uh, if we are in a horizontal section, for example, if we drilling horizontal section like this, okay. So if we have a kick, so the influx of the kick will be so small, okay, to be considered. So we're gonna have shot in the real pipe pressure equal shot and casing pressure approximately the same but once the influx has been moved into the vertical section so its height will be increased so you're going to found sudden jump for shot and casing pressure to be larger than shot and drill pipe pressure okay okay so what about these cases guys if we have here annular loaded with cutting and if we have annular clean no cutting, okay? What do you think for, uh, or what do you think about the casing pressure? Here casing pressure is higher or here, and why? Here we have cutting and the annulus, and here no cutting. When you say cutting, you mean gas? Cutting, cutting, uh, solids. Oh. Clean annular is having a high casing pressure. Yes, clean annular has higher casing pressure because here the uh, cutting will act as increase in the mud weight. Okay, as the mud weight is some solids and some uh, liquid. So once the cutting is loaded, so here we having higher hydrostatic pressure. So we having lower casing pressure, but here clean annular, no cutting, so less hydrostatic pressure. So higher casing pressure. Okay, guys. Okay, now to talk about gas behavior, we have two types of gas behavior. We have uh, gas migration, and we have gas expansion. Gas migration always happen in a closed system. Okay, so the well is closed, but here happen with circulation, the wheel is open. Okay, here we follow P1 coils law, P1, V1 equal P2, V2. So once the influx enters the well, it has the same formation pressure, let's say uh, 3000 BSI, and its volume is, let's say 10 parallel, okay? With time, you're gonna find you have same pressure, 3,000 PSI, same volume, 10 parallel, okay? But for gas expansion, you allow the gas to expand. So it's a volume increase. So if enter with 3,000 PSI, 
So B1, B1, 3000, then parallel, equal. Here we allow the volume to be increased. So instead of 10, it will be, for example, 15 parallel. So now P2 gonna decrease, okay? As here, 15 increase, so pressure decrease. And this one, what we see during gas expansion, we need the uh, gas pressure or the influx pressure to be reduced, not to frag the formation. So if you look here to the gas migration, the Sorry, influx- but, but even in the gas migration, uh, the volume will expand because because on the no. top of the gas is there is some mud, so the mud is is coming less than this, so the hydrostatic pressure of the mud will be less. No, so no, 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 no. The gas will expand. No. This is the normal. But I know. No, let's let's say if you look here to this figure, okay, you mean you mean here for example for the second stage hydrostatic pressure is dropped, right? So it is. Uh, it is allowed the uh, gas volume to be increased, right? You mean this point, right? Yeah. But if you look yeah. here, we have surface pressure. Surface pressure has increased. No, but, but has what, increased. What allowed this? But what what allowed the surface pressure to increase is the gas expansion. Gas if the expansion. gas didn't expand. No, yeah. no, no gas expansion. The the gas. Okay, let's let's discuss from the let's, beginning. Let's, okay, let me tell you something. So the gas, the gas under pressure of five thousand, uh, if if uh, uh, the gas uh, under uh, I don't know five thousand feet of the mud is the same as the gas of, uh, below two thousand feet of the mud. It's yes. Not the same volume. Yes. It's not the same volume. Yes, because because we are in a closed system. Yeah. <coughs> but but if if we are in an open system and we circulate. So your point of view is correct, but in a closed system, no uh, gas expansion, just exactly. yeah, Please. just transfer to the same point. In this in these three wells here, what you are uh, we are in a closed system and three thousand yeah, yeah three, we are in a closed five hundred psi five hundred okay, okay so so and three thousand okay so let me discuss so let me discuss okay. this slide then uh, discuss with me okay. Here we have gas influx. We have formation pressure, 5,500 psi. Once we have influx, the influx enters the well with the same pressure, 5,500. Gas pressure affects in all directions, up, down, right, and left, okay? So here we having hydrostatic pressure, 5,000. So now our bottom mode pressure is only the pressure of the gas, 5,500. And the surface pressure is the difference between the gas pressure and the hydrostatic. So we have 500 only on the surface. Okay. With time, we have a closed system, closed well, no uh, circulation. So now the gas has been migrated to the uh, casing show, for example. So we have in here on the bottom 500, 5,500 plus 2,500. So we have here 8,000 psi. And for the surface pressure, we have the difference, 5,500 minus 2,500, so it will be 3,000. Once the gas reaches to the surface, as the gas migrated, okay? And actually, this one not happened, okay? But let's just say if we have 5,500 at the surface, so now we have surface pressure, same value, and the bottom hole pressure is 5,500 plus 5,000 as a hydrostatic. So now we have 10,500 PSI. Okay, so your point of view, your point of view, if we are uh, in a shallower depth, so we have less hydrostatic pressure, so the volume need to be increased, the volume of the gas. Your point of view is correct only in case we are in an open system, in case we are circulating, okay? So the gas volume has the ability to be increased, but in a closed system, if we increase the volume, let's say we increase the volume like this, Okay, so where is where is the mud? Where is the mud to be displaced? It is a closed system, closed system. So if the volume increased, okay, where is the mud to go? You know, but let's let's mention also in actual, uh, if, if the volume tend to be increased, now we have fracturing for the formation. Now the formation has fractured, okay, so, Volume of the mud is displaced into the formation. So gas now have the ability to expand somehow. 
You what's the point? Okay, Bill, but uh, what I what what I didn't understand. What's allowed the pressure surface back pressure increased? Surface pressure increased because gas pressure, yeah. yeah, because gas pressure is affected in all direction. So here at the beginning, at the first stage, we have gas pressure 5,500 in all directions. And we have hydrostatic down 5,000. So 5,500 up minus 5,000 down. So we have the difference. Okay, in the second case, we have 5,500 up and we have only 2,500 down. So the difference is 3,000. And the last case, we have gas up and no down. So we have the same pressure, 5,500. It's okay now? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So here, gas is lighter than the mud and we'll try to migrate up the hole. The speed of the migration, depending on the mud properties, weight and viscosity and the volume angle, Gas here can't expand, the gas can't expand. So we'll carry the formation pressure upwards all the time, causing shot encasing pressure to increase, bottom hole pressure to increase, shot and drill pipe to increase, and there is risk to break the casing show pressure. Of course, for sure, no actual case, you can increase the bottom hole pressure to twice, from 5,500 to 10,500. So you have additional 5,000. So for sure you frag the formation, okay? But this just to get the point of the gas migration, okay? But no actual case to have increase uh, to 5,000 PSI. You for sure frag the formation, okay? So here, let's say for uh, a real case, if we have here influx and we have shot in the real by 500 PSI, and uh, let's say shot encasing pressure is uh, 600 PSI, okay? There is gas migration like this. Okay, same volume. Same volume. So we have here sudden jump for the drill pipe gate 100 and the casing, same thing. So here we have encasing 700 pieces. So, in your opinion, how to deal with this situation is to uh, keep drill pipe pressure constant or keep casing pressure constant? Can you, can you repeat, please? Okay, okay. At the first case, we have influx, so we have drill by 500 and casing 600. Then we wait some time, we didn't take any action, so there is gas migration, so we have additional 100 on both cages, so drill by 600 and casing 700. Okay, so to deal with this situation, to back again to the original uh, case, okay, you need to keep drill by pressure constant or keep casing pressure constant. Casing pressure constant. Okay, anyone has another opinion? Guys, anyone has another opinion? Okay, for casing pressure constant, it is wrong, but let's say why. Here, okay. If we need to keep casing pressure constant, so first thing to uh, keep pressure constant or decrease the pressure somehow to back again to the normal uh, case, we need to bleed some mud. We need to bleed some mud. So once bleeding some mud, we allow here gas to expand. So once the gas expanded, okay, hydrostatic pressure here decreased. So casing pressure need to be increased and instead of 700 to be, for example, 800. So if you need to keep the casing pressure constant at 600 psi, you're gonna open the chop more, open the chop more. So once you open the chop more, you're gonna decrease your bottom hole pressure, okay? So you're gonna have further influx. So what should you do is to keep the original shot and drill by pressure. You allow here gas volume to be expanded by bleeding some mud volume, okay? While keeping 5,000 is constant. While keeping 5,000 is constant plus the hydrostatic in the drill pipe. So here we are equal to the formation pressure. We are in the balanced situation. So no fear is of influx, okay? But if you keep casing pressure constant to the original value, 600 PSI, you need to open the chop more. 
So opening the tube more, decreasing the hydrostatic, more decreasing the bottom wall more. So you're gonna have further infant. Okay. Okay, guys. Okay. So so sorry, in this case we'll get another influx. Uh another influx. We'll get another influx. For yeah. what? For what? One will beat of the power. Yeah. The, the, one will beat of the pressure. The need of keeping what? Keeping uh, drill pipe or keeping casing? Keeping drill pipe constant. Okay, let's let's back again to the second stage. This one. Here we have 500. Then due to gas migration, we have 100 increase. Okay, so we open the chalk bleeding some mud to making reduction for this 100 increase. So back again to the normal value, 500 PSI normal situation. But if we make reduction for more than 100, for example, to be 101 PSI, so we're gonna be in underpants, so we have a further impact. Okay, so here, once once we opening the uh, chalk to bleed some mud, casing pressure starts to increase to be 800 and the drill pipe pressure decrease, okay? So in this case, we allow the gas to migrate and expand at the same time. Gas, mi uh, gas migrates, gas migrates first. So we have additional 100 PS5, okay? No, I, I mean in the third case. In, the third, of, in so. the third case, we, we didn't allow gas migration. We opened the chop to allow gas expansion, to reduce the pressure. So avoid, so avoid the formation, formation break or something. Yes, yeah? yes. Okay. okay, so to, to keep the situation under control, you keep the real pipe pressure constant, not casing. If you need to keep casing, you're going to uh, reduce the hydrostatic pressure here, so you're going to have the further influx. But once you keep the but real maybe, pipe... Oh. Also, but also maybe we, we are in, uh, in, in, low, uh, in low formation, uh, information low permeability, so the pressure keep increasing. And we are opening and we get more influx in this case, no? No, 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 because what? Because we have already 100 increase. If we didn't have no, this but, 100, but, yeah, let's say, let's say, let's say, let's say, this is number one and this is number two without this one. So here, once we have 500 and 600, okay, allowing gas expansion by opening the chop. So now the real pipe decreased casing pressure decreased, bottom wall pressure decreased, so we have further influence. But due to the existence of gas migration, so we have additional 100 PSI. This additional 100 PSI, we make bleeding for it. Okay, so the situation is under control. No, you told us in the previous slides, in, in low, low, low permeability formation, so the pressure will increase, take time to stabilize. Yes, take time to stabilize, yes. yes. But, so but no relation. Okay in this same case, so one. Yeah, say what you want. If it's, so, so take time to stabilize. So the shutting pressure also in the casing and drip pipe will take time to stabilize. Okay, no so problem. Keep increasing. No problem to take some time. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, I, I got your point. You got my point. Uh -huh. Yeah, here for, for taking some time, not related to gas migration. We only record our pressures at this area. If it is if it is low permeability or high permeability, we still for pressure stabilization, okay? Or we wait for pressure stabilization. Let's just say, for example, shot in drill by 350, casing pressure is 400. Here, we reach it to this value in, let's just say, one minute. But here we reach it after two minutes. Then pressure is stable, pressure is stable. So we record our pressures. Okay. Then if the 350 being, for example, 400, and here being 450. Okay. So now no relation for the uh, formation permeability, low or high. It doesn't depend. It doesn't make sense. Okay. Now we have a new situation of gas migration. No relation for formation permeability. I already take the influx from formation. Okay, then after pressure stabilization, I had gas migration or influx migration. Okay, so no relation 
for permeability at this time. The permeability only makes sense at the time of the influx. But once the influx is already inside the well and pressure supplies, okay, so no sense for the permeability. Only deal with gas migration or gas expansion. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, now to talk for gas expansion. Now the well is open, okay, in an open system and we circulating the influx out from the well. Gas expansion occurs while circulating out the well. Gas volume increase while expansion. While expansion, gas volume increase, so pressure decrease. So we start, for example, here with one barrel. After two times, it will be two barrel. After some time, it will be eight barrel. As long as you approaching from the surface, so the hydrostatic above you is decreased, so your volume is increased. Maximum expansion for the gas is near the surface because no hydrostatic above. Casing pressure increase while casing while gas expands due to loss in hydrostatic. Bit gain increase while gas expansion and when gas is passing the chalk, so bit gain starts to decrease. After gas influx is out of the well, bit level become steady. Look here to this slide. We starting, for example, with one parallel. After some time, two parallel, four, eight, 16, 32 as a surface. Okay, so let's imagine the volume V1 is one parallel and the V2 is 32 parallel. So now the volume has been doubled 32 times. So the pressure has been decreased to 32 times. As according to point law, V1, V1 equal V2, V2. So P1, V1 here is 32. So P2 equal P1 over 32. Okay, and this one, what we see during circulating out influx is to allow gas expansion, not gas migration, not to break the formation. Here for uh, gas expansion, gas expansion as circulated up the hole, we have three points, for example, uh, if here, this open hole, okay, let's say here is the casing show pressure as a specific point. While guys, while gas is moving below a specific point like casing show. Now, casing show pressure increase, decrease, or stays the same while gas is moving downward. Okay, during this Very stage. Increasing. Yes, increasing. And this is the point here. If the gas bubble is moving low specific point like this, like casing show pressure, so the casing show pressure or this point pressure will be increased. Okay. While passing, so now some influx is low and some influx is above specific point. While passing, present continuous. So now casing show pressure. Increase, decrease, or it stays the same. Guys, while the influx is passing. Will decrease. Yes, will decrease. Okay, so coming to the last case, while the influx is completely above the casing show or a specific point. So now the casing show pressure increase, decrease, or it stays the same. Same. Yeah, stays the same. Pass. Yes. So these are the three cases. If we have specific point like casing show here, and the gas is moving downward, so it's a pressure increasing. If uh, the influx is passing a specific point, so some of the gas below and some of the gas above, so its pressure drops or decreasing. So if we have a specific point and the gas now is completely above, so now the pressure is constant. Now let's talk about the gas influx in water pismat and oil pismat. For uh, oil pismat and water pismat, gas has solubility only in oil pismat. Okay, so the password is solubility. While dealing with oil pismat, the gas has solubility in the oil pismat, so more difficult to detect the gas influx, lower migration rate, gas go into solution on bottom, smaller kick size, smaller casing pressure. For expansion, 
no expansion, okay, till reaching bubble point pressure. No expansion till reaching bubble point pressure. Then first bubble of the gas started to liberate from the uh, oil mud. But here for water based mud, no solubility. So it's easier to detect higher migration rate, stay as a separate phase, bigger kick size and higher casing pressure. For expansion, it will be slow first, then fast due to reduction in the hydrostatic pressure. Coming to talk about the maximum show pressure cases, we have gas kick and we have liquid kick with their oil or water. At the initial shot in, it is the first impact on the formation or the casing show, so it will be maximum show pressure. And second case, while gas kick, while gas kick here, so the maximum show pressure while the top of the influx reaching to the casing show. When the top of the influx reaching to the casing show. While dealing with liquid, so it's depending on the annular geometry. So for example, if we have here the open hole like this. Okay, so there is small area and wide area. So once we have liquid like this here, having high pitch small once reaching to this area narrow area so its height will increase so the reduction in the hydrostatic will uh, increase so now casing show pressure increase so here the second case for dealing with liquid influx when the pressure change due to annular is a change when the annular become narrower so the hydrostatic height uh, become uh, higher so the loss in the hydrostatic become higher if shutting casing pressure exceeds the mass band shutter, then the formation break down. Clear, guys, this point? Is that clear? Again, please. Okay. Here for gas kick or oil or water kick. At the initial shot in, once we shut in the well, okay, closing the BOB. So this is has a great impact on the casing show pressure on the formation, all the pressure, okay, started to increase. So this case is common at the initial shot. So the second case, if we deal with gas kick, so you're gonna have once the influx stop reaching to the casing show here, okay, so is the maximum show pressure. When dealing with liquid kick, we have here, this is the casing show, then, we have here a change in the geometry of the annulus. We have narrow area and wide area. If we have the influx here, influx height is H small at the wider area, okay? Once the influx moving to the narrower area, its height will increase, okay? As long as its height increase, so the reduction in hydrostatic pressure increase, so casing the pressure increase and casing show pressure increase. So this is the maximum casing show pressure. What's the point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Once passing the narrower area, it will decrease again when reaching to the shallower area, like this. So back again to H small. So casing show pressure will decrease again. So while dealing with liquid influx, it's depending on the annulus area. Okay. 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 Okay, for horizontal, horizontal well shot in, we just talk about this case. If we are in a horizontal uh, well, so the influx height will be small like this. Okay. So we have shot in barrel pipe approximately equal to shot in casing pressure. But once we move the two here to the vertical section, so we have sudden jump in the casing pressure. Okay. So you're gonna find shot in casing pressure equal, uh, larger than shot in drill pipe pressure. Okay, guys. Clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
So now we nearly finished our first part, our first day. Uh, now you have your exercise book to solve some uh, questions, then check answer with you. Uh... <clears throat>